Over the weekend, Tui and I took a spin up to this little grass runway airport in Waterbury, Connecticut. It's a quiet little airport with only a few aircraft movements per day, which is perfect because it allows a suspicious looking foreigner like myself to get away with wandering around an active runway with a bunch of camera gear and a dog without getting myself shot by the NSA. Looking around this airport, I think it's where old Piper Cubs get put out to pasture. Anyhow, the reason for this outing was some sweet flyby aircraft photography. That is, to get the aircraft to fly by at low level and take some action shots. The aircraft I was shooting was my friend Simon's beautiful Globe Swift. It has been featured on my channel previously. Aircraft photography requires a camera with a zoom lens and maybe a tripod. But most importantly, just like vehicle rolling shots, it really just comes down to getting your shutter speed right. Shutter speed is set by putting your camera in TV mode which is shutter priority, I know, that makes no sense, allowing you to manually set the speed of the shutter while the camera takes care of the aperture and the ISO to correctly expose the shot. Shutter speeds I tend to use for aircraft photography range between one hundredth of a second and one thousandth of a second. I know, this is a fairly wide range and I'll show you what impact these shutter speeds have on your photos. What we're aiming for with aircraft photography is to provide a sense of movement while still keeping the aircraft looking sharp. For example, if you look at this photo of me flying a little CB300, it's a nice photo, but the shutter speed is one two thousandth of a second, so the blades of the helicopter look almost still. If the shutter speed had been a little slower, the blades would have more movement blur, and this would have made a much better shot. On the other end of the scale, this photo is taken with one one hundredth of a second shutter speed, and there is just too much movement blur. The propeller completely disappears. Here we see the midpoint setting of one five hundredth of a second, and this photo you can see both the prop moving and you get a sense of movement of the aircraft by the background being blurred. Having the background blurred like this also draws your eye to the aircraft. Here's another one slightly slower at one four hundredth of a second and you can see the background is even more blurred. Take it down another step to one two hundredth of a second and you can see the background becomes very very blurred showing off the speed but you start to lose sight of the very fast moving prop. So I prefer the midpoint shutter speeds like this photo at 1 500th, which shows both the aircraft movement and allows you to see the movement of the prop. If you're shooting faster moving aircraft like jets, you'll probably need to be closer to 1 1000th of a second. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful. Comment below if you've got any questions, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye then.